praise Him this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, we glorify Thy wonderful name. Amen. Do you love Jesus? Give me a good light. Amen. If He's blessing you, give me a hallelujah. Oh, it's good to worship the Lord, isn't it? So lovely to magnify Him with all of our heart, soul, mind, and being. We serve an awesome and a wonderful God. Hallelujah. It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? This is His sanctuary. Safe place. Place where we can come and worship together and and just honor the Lord and thank Him for all of His goodness and all of His lovely blessings uh, within our life. Uh, Thank you so much for uh, giving towards the leprosy mission. Uh, We've been doing it for many, many years. Uh, Many of our ladies in the early days of the church here, we would be down at Shopper's World there, and we would be gift wrapping, and and all of the donations that came in uh, would go towards the leprosy mission, and it was wonderful. Can I get this mic down just a little bit, please? It's bouncing back on me. And uh, so it's a great and wonderful ministry. I'm pretty sure we must be close to over four to $500,000 uh, over all of these years that we have given to the leprosy mission. Amen. Because at different times when we would give, the government would also match it dollar for dollar, uh, which was wonderful. And uh, our goal this year is, uh, praise the Lord, $5,000 is what we want to give them this time around. And that will cure over 50 people. Amen? And uh, so I think that would be absolutely incredible and wonderful. You know, there's a a tremendous similarity uh, between leprosy and sin within our lives. And I just want to read something of of one of the resources from the leprosy mission. This isn't my message, but uh, just when I was praying the other day, this jumped out at me. And this is what it says, uh, because leprosy is is in quite a number of nations, uh, not just uh, the one that we heard about, Nigeria there, but India, Africa, various, various places it has not been... Uh, eliminate it yet, and it's very debilitating, as many of you know. Thank God we don't have to deal with that here. It says here, but the truth is that leprosy attacks the nervous system, causing the extremities of the body to lose their sense of touch. And as leprosy takes hold of the body, the person doesn't feel any pain. Cuts, burns, and severe wounds go untreated because they cause no pain. Infection sets in, and left untreated, the person can experience bone loss, and the infection may be so severe that the limb or digit requires amputation. And then it gives this little caption, today we know that leprosy can be cured. Do you know that sin is like that in our lives? Left untreated, it will destroy us. When we have one foot in the kingdom and one foot in the world, it's like leprosy. It has a way of wearing you down where you become accustomed to doing the wrong things and before long you're entrapped and ensnared by the powers of darkness and bit by bit you start to lose your spirituality just like a leprosy patient loses the feeling within their very being. And it's not too long before that limb is gone, and many times even a life is lost. You know, it's one of those diseases that's hard to understand, but yet I think it's a reminder to us to be so careful that we watch our own lives. Uh, This is a year where we've been talking about, you know, living right and being holy unto the Lord. And there's a good reason for that because just like leprosy takes hold of a body, so sin will take hold of a body. And we must be acutely aware of that because if we're not, it's not long before we find ourselves in trouble. I'd encourage you not only to be praying for those with this incredible uh, disease that slips up on them, but may it also be a fresh reminder to all of us that we're going to live right for Jesus. 
And when we do something that's not pleasing to the Lord, we go back to the cure, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we ask Him to heal us and to forgive us so that we're living without spiritual leprosy. Amen. And that's one of the best mini sermons you'll ever get from me. All right, now to the real thing as well, because it's all important, isn't it? You know, there's something so wonderful about the Word of God. It's amazing, isn't it? I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. I want to talk today about all of the tremendous giftings and blessings that God avails to you and I that we need to take advantage of and that we need to recognize. Church, we're a blessed people. Did you hear me? I I said we are a blessed people. We're, We're living in a wonderful country. It's not a perfect country, but it's a wonderful country with tremendous benefits. And it's the same for you and I in the kingdom. There are tremendous benefits that God wants to give to you and I. They're available to us. And here through these particular verses that I will read, you will see very clearly uh, some of those benefits and how that, can you imagine the God of heaven thinks about you and I continually, watching over us, promises never to leave us nor forsake us. You've heard me say this before, but it bears repeating. There's not a day in my life that I don't sense His presence nor feel His touch. It's wonderful to know that He is there, uh, that I can depend on Him, that no matter what I'm dealing with or what situation will face me or, or even when I am sensing His blessing, just to know that, that God is there. And that's one of the reasons I, I just love to be you know, in His presence, and and when the opportunity of fields where we can come together corporately to worship, it's such an honor and a privilege to worship our Lord and Savior. Pastor Brian said earlier, there's no better place to be than where you are right now. It's a discipline that you must put into your life because the more that you come to church and fellowship with one another, do you know what it does? It builds your faith. It strengthens you. A song may be sung, a scripture may be read that will just, the light bulb will come on and and something wonderful will happen in your very being that will just not only excite you, but open up the, the will of God and the door of opportunity that God has for you. See, God does have a plan. God does have a purpose for each and every one of us. Unfortunately, sometimes we try to sidestep it and Well, even as we saw in the early patriarchs, many of them had ample excuses not to serve the Lord, and it's similar today, but there's even a greater joy in serving God and giving ourselves to Him and His very purposes. It's lovely to serve the Lord. It may not always be like a pulpit ministry, but God has got a ministry for you. I think that's wonderful. Amen? Who knows whom you will touch, whose life you will affect, the changes that will come about because of your testimony and your influence into the life of possibly a young person or or somebody else or even an aged person. You know, we did the funeral yesterday of of Howard and Molly Knight's uh, dad. He was 99 years of age but came to faith six years ago because somebody prayed for him. Amen? Amen. Give him the opportunity to accept Jesus. That was a tremendous influence. Who knows the influence that you can have? It says here in verse 1 of Ephesians 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, notice what it says there, it's already done, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. 
Now notice very clearly here some of the things that we have read. Paul, he was called apostle by the will of God. God has a purpose. God has a will for your life. And you need to know what that purpose and that will is. And as you seek God, God will clearly direct you and guide you. You know the thing that I love about God? He doesn't give us the picture all together because we wouldn't really be able to handle it. But little by little, He will guide you and direct you just like your, your GPS, your navigation system. When it's time to turn, God will say, turn here and turn there or go straight ahead or, or warn you about some of the holdups that are, are down the road. It's the kind of God in whom we serve. And here Paul is bringing this greeting to the, to the saints here at Ephesus. And then he says something here that is amazing. To the faithful in Christ Jesus. Church, we need to be faithful. We need to be faithful first and foremost to, to God and to the calling that He has placed upon our lives. We need to be faithful to our times of prayer. We need to be faithful faithful in our study of the Word of God. We need to be faithful in our witness. We need to be faithful in attending the house of God. We need to be faithful as we witness to those beyond these walls and to invite them into the house of God. You know what I love about our church and our building here is that it is visible. When people drive by here, they know that's where the Christians meet. That's a good thing, amen? Now, we don't worship the building, but praise God, we have a building that we can worship in. Hallelujah. That people can identify as a house of God and a place of prayer. I mean, that excites me right there. Amen. We have got such opportunities, but we need to be faithful. We need to be faithful as parents. We need to be faithful as husbands. We need to be faithful as wives. We need to be faithful in our giving. There are so many areas that it is so easy for us to slip up on. But here Paul is saying, look, I'm encouraging you, those that are faithful, because one of the things that I've discovered when I am faithful in God, God truly is faithful in my life. Wouldn't it be awful to serve a God that wasn't faithful? Wouldn't it be terrible when you made that phone call or sent that text, there was no response? That he didn't accept your invitation to Facebook? Our God is faithful. You can call on him at any given moment and he's there. Hallelujah. To encourage, to inspire, and to help. Hallelujah. Look what he says here in verse 2. Grace be to you. His own merited favor. Think about that for a moment. Nothing you can ever do. You know, you can't work your salvation. It's a God given because he paid the price through his son on Calvary. His unmerited favor. God shows us favor. Not only to those that are believers, but even to those that are unsaved. I've known many people where they can look back to a moment in their life when there was a tremendous need and God was there for them. See, that's God's favor. That's God's goodness. Now, we know that God wants every man and woman to come to that place of repentance But we're dealing with the grace of God, which is absolutely amazing. But never take that grace for granted. It also goes on to say in peace. One of the wonderful things about God is the peace that passes all understanding. The peace that he imparts into our lives. Where you can go to bed at night, put your head on the pillow, and you just know that God takes care of things. See, I made up my mind a long time ago when I read that scripture that says he neither slumbers nor sleeps. So I decided there's no sense both of us being up. (laughs) And if you don't believe it, just ask my wife how quickly I go to sleep. Before my head hits the pillow, I am gone. I'm sorry for those of you that suffer otherwise. 
We will pray for you. But notice where the grace comes from, from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 3 says that he has blessed us. God is a God of blessing. Unfortunately, the enemy tries to make people think that somehow God is a tyrant instead of realizing God's a God of blessing. It's like the songwriter said, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. That's the kind of God that you and I, I serve. And, and, and as far as I'm concerned, he is just awesome. He's just amazing, hallelujah, because he's blessed us with all kinds of spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. See, everything that you need, everything that you desire, it's all in him. No wonder the enemy doesn't want that name to be glorified. No wonder our government are abandoning the name of Jesus instead of realizing if they would embrace that name and the power that goes behind it, our worlds would be different, our cities, our towns, our villages, our nation would be governed in a godly manner. But we're seeing what happens when God is left out of the equation. You see, the expression that Paul uses here in Christ is it's literally one of Paul's favorite sayings, which means I'm in a fixed position. I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded. We need to be persuaded that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all those things that we ever ask or think. But that's the kind of God and Lord that, that you and I serve here today. And there is just so much that he wants to do in your life. You see, friends, we have to realize that there is no salvation apart from Christ. There's no way you can't work for it. It's not a religious thing. Our salvation comes from Him. You can't beat yourself over the head, over the back, crawl on your knees. No, it's been provided for you. It really has. There is no favor with God apart from Christ. You see, through the name of Jesus is our very access to the Father. In the name of Jesus, we can literally go into the Holy of Holies, a place where only the high priest can enter. But thank God that when Jesus died on Calvary, the curtain was rent from top to bottom. And you and I have got complete access in and through the name of Jesus. There's power in that name, church. Devils tremble at that name. When temptation comes, all you need to do is utter that name, and it's broken. The powers of darkness have to flee. It's a wonderful, wonderful name. And there is no spiritual blessings except for those that we find in Christ, because when something is God-given, you can enjoy it. See, thank God we're not just self-made man. And that's not to say that we don't work hard. The Bible tells us those things. But we realize who our strength is. We know who our source is. It, it all comes from God, from his wonderful presence. Hallelujah. Oh, friends, when you consider the things that God does, the salvation, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, strength to overcome temptation, grace to live victorious, and to experience His divine healing in our body. All wonderful things. Do you know something? God thought about this a long time ago. See, God thought about you before you are even formed in your mother's womb. God had a plan. God had a purpose. And God just wants to bless your life. Amen? Now, let's look at verse 4 of Ephesians 1. According all of these things, all of these wonderful, wonderful blessings that we're reminded of here, according as He hath chosen us in Him. Now, notice what it says here. Before... Before the foundation of the world. Don't let the enemy tell you that God doesn't love you or God doesn't care for you or God doesn't know your situation. Before you were even brought into being, God knew everything about you. Knew what you would do, what would happen within your life. That's just God. His foreknowledge is incredible. 
before the foundation of the world, that we should be... Now, notice what it says here again, because the theme really of this year is that as we walk and we're experiencing God's blessing and His holiness coming in and His power and His glory filling the house, but it says that you would be holy. Holy and without blame before Him in love. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Having predestinated us to the adoption of children by Christ Jesus to himself according to the good pleasure of his word. That word predestination, foreordain. God knew what we would do, what would happen. But you see, man has his own free moral choice and we have to make the right choices. Because in Paul's teaching, he clearly emphasizes the human responsibility in the process of what God has done. God won't force us to do something, but he lovingly draws him to himself, and he gives us all these incredible blessings, and he just wants us to accept them. God doesn't desire this one gets saved and this one doesn't. No, he wants everybody saved. Sad to say, too many people, we fall and go into our own direction and we allow our bodies to take over instead of allowing the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. We let the flesh enter in instead of allowing the Spirit to enter into our lives. See, God wants us to live for him. You see, we've been adopted. Isn't that amazing that we've been adopted into the family of God? The God of heaven, the God of the universe, the God that's responsible for everything. He said, you're my child. I'm adopting you. As I want to tell you, if you're adopted by the devil, you're in trouble. You're in big trouble. But I'm glad that we're adopted into a wonderful family called the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. We've been adopted into into that wonderful body, which is absolutely amazing. Hallelujah. You see, God thought about us long ago. God loves us, and He planned for our salvation before He even created the universe. Oh, isn't That is how wonderful our Lord and Savior is according to His good pleasure of His will. And verse 6 says, to the praise of the glory of His grace. See, there's that grace again. Wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. See, a lot of us so condemn ourselves where we feel we're not accepted. Because of something that may have happened in your life down the road. I want to tell you, God has not, God will never abandon you. He's adopted you. Realize that you've been accepted into the family with all of the same privileges as anybody else. Hallelujah. What God does for one, He does for all. Why? Because my Bible says that God is no respecter of persons. That's our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how tall we are, how small we are, how wide we are. God loves each and every one of us. Amen. He really does. You're special to Him, and you need to understand that, and you need to uh, realize that. Hallelujah. Verse 7 says, In whom we have redemption. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. No wonder Psalm 107 verse 2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord, what? Say so. Whom he hath redeemed from the hand of who? The enemy. The enemy's out to destroy. You and I know that. We see it all around us, the destruction. There's hardly a week goes by now where somebody's not shot or murdered or stabbed or something evil that is happening. Where do you think that comes from? From the pit of darkness, from hell itself where people have surrendered their life and have been adopted into the wrong family instead of being adopted into the beloved. Thank God for redemption. Do you realize your redemption, your salvation? Again, I mentioned it briefly yesterday, but but every time I conduct a funeral, 
my goodness, I'm so aware of my own mortality. But I'm not afraid. You know why? Because absent from the body is present with the Lord. There's no fear to the believer because we know we are in his hands. No wonder a Paul who was so badly mistreated, and yet we see these incredible scriptures. I mean, he went through everything that anyone could ever have gone through, and yet he would shake off the very dust of his being. He would get up and he would preach the gospel again. And he would encourage those around him to do the same thing. He understood his redemption. He knew what was ahead of him. He knew there was a heaven to gain. Can you imagine that? Hallelujah. One day, we'll walk on streets of gold. Our limited mind sometimes can't fathom that, but one day, we'll walk those streets of gold. You see, in the book of Revelation 13, verse 8, speaking of Jesus, just to show you how that God thought about you so long ago before you were even formed, the Bible says that Jesus is called the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. Think about that. That excites me. That encourages me to know that a God thinks about me has good thoughts towards me, thoughts of good, not of evil, thoughts of blessing, not cursing. That's our God. But you know what I I love about our Savior and our redemption? God does more than save us from destruction. And that's wonderful within itself. He wants to build in us and you and me the very character of His Son. Think about that for a moment. What a a, a role model. What character in Christ. Don't you want to be like him more and more? And you can be as you read the Scriptures, as you pray, as you communicate, and allow the Spirit of God to fill you from the crown of your head to the very soles of your feet. You know what I love about God is that He came to do more than just to improve our nature. Here's the great thing about our Savior. He came to change your nature. He came to change your nature. Not just to improve it. Not just so you could be a little bit better. He came to change it so all of your desire and your motivation is built around Him. Because 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be... Now, notice the term again that we mentioned earlier, in Christ. In Christ. Notice that. Fixed position. I'm in Him. Friends, if you're in Him, you don't need to worry about anything else. Because your mind, your motivation will all be towards Him. Yes, I realize that we live in a world where there is temptation all around us. But thank God that when we're in Christ, we have the strength to resist and to overcome if we will allow God to help us. Because it says old things will pass away. I don't want to do those things that I used to do. He came to change Hallelujah. My very life, behold, all things become new. Not only speaking of that of our our very nature, but in the transition from the Old Testament to the New Testament, because the Old Testament we were under law, but thank God in the New Testament we come under grace. The old passes, the new comes in. But as we have said many times from this pulpit, Grace is not a license for us to sin. Grace is a motivation for us to become more like Jesus. Because we understand who He is and His love and His greatness towards our our very life. We are the redeemed. In verse 7, as we go back to Ephesians 1, it's just absolutely amazing. Whom we have redemption, how? How? Through his blood. A lot of churches don't want to talk about the blood. But there's power in the blood. Because of the blood. Because of the sacrifice that was made. 
I know sometimes it seems gory blood, you know, but it was his blood that was shed so that you and I could overcome and be victorious. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Some people need to hear this. Stop dragging up your past. Stop pulling up the old sins. They're gone. If the devil pulls up your sin of your past, you remind him of his future. It's dealt with. It's done. It's over. Move on. Stop carrying the baggage of the past. It will destroy you. It will hold you down regardless of what it may be, even if it was abuse in your life, which is an absolute horrendous and horrible thing that you went through, don't go back there. Go forward in Christ and realize that God has got so much more in store for you and blessing that will just overtake you and you will be able to minister so much more effectively to others. But if you're stuck in the past, you're stuck Move forward, and we say that in love. It's not to undermine what took place. It's just God's got something even greater. And what the devil meant for bad in your life, I just know that God will turn it to good. He'll turn it to good. Hallelujah. He forgives our sins, amen. Stuff that has happened, things that we have done. And again, it's according to the richness of His grace. He's so abundant. Amen. God just doesn't give you enough. He always goes above and beyond. That's what I love about our God. Amen. He goes above and beyond. In 1 Peter 1, verse 18, listen to how Peter puts this. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold... You can't purchase your salvation. You know, a lot of people got in trouble by trying to purchase their salvation. You can't do that. Corruptible things of silver and gold from your fan conversation received by the tradition from your fathers. Always, it's good to read books. I mean, read as many books as you can, but make this number one right? Again, you've heard me say this before. Every book is, that has been written is some form of interpretation of this book. But this is a true book. The other's man's opinion and various things, because along the way, tradition enters into our lives. I mean, most of us, there's over 27 different nationalities represented here, and we've all got certain traditions. Some of them are good, but some of them need to be shaken off as well, right? Because what they are is simply traditions of man. We want the Word of God, amen, to prevail in our life, to help us overcome. Not these different traditions that have been added on. That's what happened was, oh, you can pay for your salvation, or you can pay to get somebody out of purgatory. No. You need to be saved. You need Jesus. Amen. Amen. Need an encounter with heaven. And God helps us. He really does. And it goes on here to say, but here's the answer. With the precious blood of Jesus, as a lamb without blemish, without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God and raise him up from the dead and give him glory that your faith and your hope may be in God. I speak now to young people. You have a great future in God. There's a blessed hope for you. Keep your faith and trust in the Lord. Amen. Follow him. Let him be your helper. I was just so blessed the other day. I forget which day it was, but, but Pastor Brian and I were just in the foyer. And uh, these three young people came in and, uh, to, the, to the church. Uh, I believe one of them attends the church here and two friends uh, with her. And they were about to face some exams. It's exam time right now, as many of you know. 
uh, in many of the uh, 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 schools and so forth. And he said, we're, we're facing some exams. We just wanted to come in and pray. And we had the opportunity of praying with them. Pray about everything. Because God can help and God can bring to remembrance those things that you've studied. Now, young people, you still got to study. Okay? You can only bring to remembrance those things you've learned. You know what I mean? He only does the supernatural when he really has to do the supernaturally. There's one thing I've learned about God is God never blesses laziness. That goes for all of us, right? We have a part to play, and God wants us to trust him, and he will help us with the parts that we can't do as long as we do the parts that we can do. Amen? For ordained before the foundation was manifest in these last times for you who by him to believe in God and raised him up from the dead and give him glory that your faith and hope Faith and hope might be in God. Thank God for faith. God honors simple faith. You don't, you don't have to try to stir up faith or work up faith. God has given to every man, to every woman, a measure of faith. You already have it. And that's why when he, God talked about faith, when Jesus talked about faith, he brought it down to the very fact of being that of a grain of mustard seed, one of the smallest seeds. Somehow we have to think we've got to have big faith. No, you just use the faith that you have. And you know something, when you use it, you'll discover that it works. It really does. I don't have time to pull these up on the screen, but I, you can write them down as a reference. And as many of you know, behind your chairs, there's no paper there. Always take advantage of that. Check out what we say here. We don't mind you checking up on us. And uh, that's what that no paper's there for. Ephesians 1, 7, as we've said here, we're redeemed by His blood. Romans 5, 9, we're justified by His blood. Uh, Hebrews 9, 14, we're purged by His blood. Uh, Colossians 1 and 14, we're forgiven by His blood. Uh, Revelation 7, verse 14, we are cleansed by His blood. Colossians 1, 20, we have peace through His blood. Uh, Hebrews 10, 19, we enter into the holiest by His blood. The recognition that we have been washed cleansed in the precious blood of Jesus. Friends, that is absolutely amazing. Amen? It's like our sin has been erased. Hallelujah! And we are cleansed. And He places on us robes of righteousness, which simply means that we're in right standing with God. Good to be in right standing with people, isn't it? It's, it's, it's awful when, when there's tension in a situation. It's always nice when we can be in good, good standing. You see, Romans 10 verse 13 clearly says, for whosoever, who's whosoever? That's everybody, isn't it? For whosoever, doesn't matter what background, which culture, culture, what religion, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's not in my name, it's in His name, amen? It's not in some prophet's name, it's in His name, amen? It's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, 1 Timothy 2, verses 5 and 6, For there is one God, one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself. Who was it? It was Jesus that gave himself. Nobody else. It was Jesus who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Isn't that amazing? Wow. I don't know if it's you. I love being saved. I love being born again. I love those terms because I can explain them to people. Hallelujah. It is absolutely amazing. Oh, let's quickly jump back here to Ephesians 1. I don't know about you, but I'm enjoying this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're redeemed through the blood, forgiveness according to His grace. Where in verse 8 of Ephesians 1, He hath abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence. Wow! Isn't that amazing? 
He hath to bind it towards us. In all wisdom, God gives you wisdom. God gives you ideas. God gives you direction within your very life. Hallelujah. We need to serve the Lord. Amen. That's how wonderful our Lord is. Wisdom and prudence. Prudence there being understanding. He wants us to understand. Having made known unto us the mysteries of His will. God shows you things. Quite a number of times in my life where God shows me things. And it can be in a dream or a vision. Or, or it's through the Word of God. Or when somebody's proclaiming that Word. Or as I mentioned earlier, a song being sung. A revelation will come to heart and mind by the Holy Spirit. According to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Talking about reconciliation, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Again, it's a reminder of the cross, isn't it? That when Jesus' arms was was stretched wide. He was taking hold of humanity on the one hand and taking hold of God the Father in the other and bringing us together through Him. Reconciled to God. Peace with God. Oh, precious church, sin so separates us from God and the presence of God. It's not that God doesn't love us or care for us, but oft times He will have to allow certain things to take place so that he will, we will be drawn back to him again and realize his goodness. He's, he's a great father, isn't he? He loves us. He just wants to bless us. But he wants to bless us in such a way that we will never walk away from him or separate ourselves from him. Oh, friends, his exceeding greatness, his power towards us is absolutely amazing. It really is. He was on here to say, verse 16. Oh, I need to jump back here a little bit. I'm getting ahead of my, myself here. Hallelujah. Uh, verse, uh, verse 11. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purposes of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. He has so brought us into himself, hallelujah, that we are the praise of his glory, that we've been adopted into that incredible family of God. Amen? That we should be to the praise of His glory who first trusted in Christ. Think about that for a moment. Aren't you glad you trusted in Him? You followed Him? In whom also you trusted after that you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that you believed and you were sealed. Here comes the Holy Spirit with with the, the Holy Spirit of promise. See, Jesus says, I will go, but the Comforter will come. You think of the gifts and and ministry of the Holy Spirit that is available to each and every one of us. When he talks about it being sealed, it's literally like taking an envelope that you would mail and, and you seal that. It's sealed. Again, it's complete. It's done. There's so much that God is doing. We have a, a her, an inheritance predestinated, hallelujah, His foreknowledge according to His purposes. When we talk of an inheritance, a possession or blessing bestowed as a gift, here's God again just saying, look at what I've given you. I've given you so much. So much. Which is the earnest 
of our inheritance under the redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of His glory. Again, dealing with our amazing salvation. Oh, I've quickly got to, there's so much that I want to say here. You see, friends, the Holy Spirit constantly assures us of our inheritance and our heritage in Him and of all of His blessings that He has in, in store for us. You see, that, that assurance, that, that heritage, it's authentic, it's bona fide, it, it's not a, a forgery. When God says, I'm going to bless you, He means it. When He says He's going to save you, He means it. When He says He's going to deliver you, He means it. You can trust them. He's not lying to you. That's why the psalmist was able to say, looking at his life and everything that God had done, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Friends, we need to, to praise the Lord. He says in verse 15, Wherefore I also, after I had heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and the love unto all the saints, I cease not, he says, to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. It's so good to pray one for another. Amen. That the God of our Lord Jesus, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. Can't you see how much God wants to give you? No wonder Romans 8, 28 says, as, as believers we see things so differently because and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To those that are called according to His purpose. You know, one thing I've discovered in my life, the devil always goes one step too far. And I've learned that if you give the devil enough rope, he'll eventually hang himself. You just rejoice in God. Because as believers, many times your disadvantage becomes your advantage. So many times. So many times. The eyes of your understanding, verse 18, being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of His inheritance in the saints. You need to understand that and walk in that and live in that and sleep that and dream that. All that God has for you. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power, which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead and set Him at His own right hand in the heavenly places. Friends, I want you to, if you've missed anything that I've said here today, I don't want you to miss this. God is bigger than the devil. God is greater than any fear or trial or situation that you will face. Far above all principalities and powers, might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. And he hath put all things. Under what? You see, friends, I've got a scripture basis when I say, well, if you hit the devil, let him know it. Because he's under... Oh, I don't want to upset him. Friends, you can crush him in the name of Jesus. Not in your name, but in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Like the songwriter said, we've got the power in the name of Jesus. And we do. Hallelujah. Which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Just the other day, friends, I, I watched a, a video clip that I'd showed here before and decided not to show it today because it's extremely graphic. But it was a gentleman called Bill Wise who had an incredible out-of-body experience where he believed that literally the Lord allowed him to go into the very depths of hell. 
and showed them what hell was like. Friends, sometimes I believe that we need a vision of hell so that we can deliver people from going there. And if we could simply understand and realize the power and the authority that we have in the name of Jesus, that we would never again be afraid to mention the name of Jesus nor witness for Him because, friends, every time I do that, somebody's going into a lost eternity. God doesn't want that. God wants people to be saved, delivered, filled with the Holy Spirit. Because thank God, people are getting saved. Amen? People are also getting saved, delivered, and set free. But we need to keep doing what God's called us to do. And when we realize whom Christ is in us, and we take our rightful position in Him, then we truly will see more accomplished. We're still in good time, but I'm going to finish with this scripture. Don't allow people to go into a lost eternity. Pray for them. Pray for your family, your spouse, your loved ones. Pray for them. Pray for them. Intercede for them. Uplift them before God. Don't take nothing for granted. I love what Paul said to Timothy, 2 Timothy 4, verse 1 8. And let this be my charge to you as it was Paul's charge to Timothy. When he declared, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Listen to me, church. I mean this with all my heart. Preach the word. This isn't just for preachers. This is for all of us because we're all preachers. I use that term preachers for those behind the pulpit, but we're all preachers. Preach the word. Be instant in season. Out of season. When you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. It also says reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. You need to know the doctrines of the Bible, not the doctrines of man. There's a big difference. That's why we have so many denominations. For the time will come. I think the time's here when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things Church, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry. Friends, if you're not doing something in the kingdom, you need to be doing something in the kingdom. You need to serve somewhere. Well, I'm just waiting on God. No, you start doing something and God will direct you. Your GPS ain't going to do much if you're just sitting still. It gives you the directions once you start to move. You're in a parking lot somewhere, you know, until you get out to that main intersection, you don't know which way to turn. You do something. Do the work of an evangelist. Make foolproof of thy ministry, for I am now ready. Paul says, I'm not ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Oh, I love this. You would think Paul was an Irish man. He says, I fought a good fight. We Irish love to fight. You know, a fellow was walking down the streets of Belfast and there was 20 people in a brawl fighting, just beating one another. And he stops one of the guy and he says, is this a private fight? He says, or can anybody join in? <laughs> I've fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. Let that be said of you and I at faith here. Henceforth, Here's the crown. Here's the, here, here's the blessing. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only. Oh, wish my arms were big enough to wrap around every one of you. But unto all them that love his appearing. 
And understand this. You have not chosen me. I've chosen you. I've ordained you. That you should go and bring forth fruit. That your fruit should remain. And whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. John 15 verse 16. Would you stand with me and bow your head in prayer? Would you stand right now? God's power, God's Holy Spirit is in, in the house. Friends, we'll love you. Love you with all of our heart. Thank God for His Word, His blessings, His promises. Time really just doesn't allow me to go into all that I would have liked to have shared here today, but I believe we've given you enough to to build your faith and to encourage you. While heads are bowed in prayer, do you know Jesus as your Savior? Or have you been putting it off for some reason or another, thinking maybe, well, I'm not good enough, or, or when I'm ready? Friends, you can't be better enough to get saved. You just need to get saved, and God will make you better. That's how it works. Don't get the cart before the horse. While heads are bowed in prayer, if you want to accept Jesus into your heart or you've been away from God or have literally what we call a backslidden, would you raise your hand right now? Just while heads are bowed in prayer, just, yes, I see that hand. Others, just raise your hand. Yes, I see that hand. Other others. Wow. Wow. I know God is just doing something in people's lives right now. For those of you that may be here as well, you need a touch from the Lord. I put much prayer, as I do all the time, into each message, into each service. But you need a healing in your body. You need a breakthrough. Maybe you just need filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Priest team is going to lead a song. And as they sing this song, those that raise their hand for salvation, those of you that need a touch, I want you to start to come and just form a line here and the ushers will help you at the altar. I want to lay my hands on you this morning. I only do this when I sense God directs me to do it. But this is the moment I know God has something to impart into your life today. And while we're praying for those here at the front, I'm fully aware that some of you may have to leave. We give you permission in a few moments to do that. But if you can stay and join with us and be praying alongside those that are receiving prayer, we would also appreciate that very much. Praise team, would you just start to sing right now? And those of you that need prayer, would you just make your way up to the altar right now in Jesus' name? Would you just please come, just start to come in Jesus' name? Just come in Jesus' name. I surrender yes, all to you. Everything I give to you. We're here to help one another. We all need prayer. Just come. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I surrender. I surrender.
withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. I surrender all. I surrender all to you. Withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. I give you all. I give you all of me. I give you all of me. I give.
withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. I surrender all. I surrender all to you. Thank you. 